the At Home Edition of Rocket League Central. I'm Brody Leafex Moore, and I'm here to keep you up to date on everything Rocket League, Rocket League, and Rocket League. So, on today's show, you can expect some great things, like, of course, highlights from the North American Regional Number Two in Grid Watch. We are covering NRG in Double Tap, and we have all the best community-made stuff in Breakout. Now, season three just dropped. If you guys haven't booted up your game recently, get on it. Download the new things. There's a bunch of new features, quality of life stuff and some new content that you'll be missing out on if you're not playing right now. The ability to upgrade and trade in your blueprints and items and stuff, a new menu for it has been introduced and oh my god, is it a godsend. There is also some NASCAR and F1 bundles you can pick up in the store and DFH has a bit of a race car circuit rework going on right now. So boot up the game, download it, have some fun with Rocket League. But as I mentioned, we got to get on to the show, and we're going to start it off with the North American Regional Number Two for Spring Split and Grid Watch. So sit back and enjoy. <laughs> The second of three North American Spring Split regional events is in the bag. The Titans of Western Rocket League have been neck and neck for the entirety of Season X so far, and this event put another notch in the belt of perhaps the region's most promising competitor. The playoffs kicked off with Space Station Gaming versus Rogue. Rogue had clawed their way to the quarterfinals from the knockout bracket, having been placed in a difficult group for the round robin stage, and were eager to continue their recent momentum. Space Station, however, had been on a tear of their own, and promptly made short work of their opponents. Rogue tried clinging to life in one final extended overtime, but it just wasn't enough in the end. Mouse is lingering. Oh my. It's gonna be up and available, but Space Station's starting to hold players back a little bit more. You see it during these longer overtimes. Teams start to turtle up. They don't want to take the risks that they would have done at any other time. Rettles oh, the oh, off the crossbar, and what? Rettles is the hero for <laughs> Space Station. It's Space Station Gaming nil. The post two. Space Station Gaming four. Rogue one. NRG meanwhile had to contend with the recently named Phase Clan, who were formerly the Peeps. Coming from the knockout bracket and facing down Phase's momentum, NRG eventually managed to clinch the set with an overtime win. Now Justin moves in. Gyro takes over for Phase. Oh, it's just crossfire challenge again and again for Garrett G. But still, they are getting healthy looks on net. Justin's accidentally got a touch on Squishy's shot, but. Still a chance for NRG to advance up this. It's wide open. Squishy scores. Finally, they do what, you know, really they should have done a good while ago. But like we said earlier, they've done enough here to eliminate phase. They advance to the next round of the competition. Speaking of overtimes, while the Kansas City Pioneers faced a one-sided matchup against the dominant team Envy, they earned the distinction of forcing the longest overtime of the entire event, holding out against Envy's onslaught for more than six minutes before finally succumbing. This one up to make sure that Envy doesn't have a clear out. They're oh, the they're overextended. Can Mary Cat get back? What? Grab a ticket there either. Nobody home for the Pioneers. And after six minutes, Envy oh take it with just a long goodness. clear from Atomic. You're kidding me. This is how the OT ends after what we saw from the defense. It's an overextended play from KCP. That small of a mistake. G2 versus Sonics was similarly a stomp, with G2 winning every game, but won with a massive four-point differential, styling on their fallen foes in a final blowout game. The stage was set for a duel between Space Station Gaming and NRG in the semifinals, the two teams having clashed repeatedly during Season X and having a fairly even record thus far. SSG's indomitable will proved to be too much for NRG to handle, their early overtime win granting SSG momentum which carried them to victory. Typical almost found the goal. Squishy tries to get this clear out. NRG in a last desperate gasp for offense, trying to push forward. But midfield, it's tough wow. to get by. Justin does what he can to get by. Garrett getting harassed by Arsenal again. Slows Garrett down. Now Squishy pops this one up high. They need to score with time left. Another pass from Squishy. Reynolds misses the ball. Justin is flat in the touch. That's not going to help NRG. Space Station Gaming ended in six. They move to the grand finals. 
Coincidentally, the other side of the semifinals was also a rival grudge match ending in a 4-2 score, Envy vs G2. G2 weathered the storm of Envy's early advantage and looked like they might be able to leverage a victory as the set neared its end, but just couldn't make it happen in time. The grand finals came down to Space Station Gaming facing off against Envy, both squads vying for the top in the never-ending battle to be crowned North America's best team. SSG won 3 out of the first 4 games, putting them at an early match point, but Envy struck back hard, tying things up and taking it to the last possible round. Space Station Gaming ultimately won the day, ending things in style with a 2-0 win in the tiebreaker finale and putting themselves back on the top of the region. Join the two-goal lead, he'll just play defense. Oh. Turbo out wow. to miss, town and final 10 seconds though, and Space Station's just all over the ball. Sipical back down. And will it happen for the first time since the fall split Space Station gonna take a regional event here in North America? Well, I guess, oh, is that just in? No, it's nope. not. But I guess <laughs> Space Station and Rettles are proven right. It seems they don't lose with that play style. They run the gauntlet here. One NA regional remains before the major. Can SSG keep their title or will yet another champion emerge from a region that has never been more stacked? Stay tuned to find out. From CRL to First Touch Podcast, and it's rolled as his worst nightmare. Joining me on the line is Tyler Bates, aka T Bates. What's up, man? Thanks for joining me. What's up, Leaf? I'm I'm having a good day. Good day. Good. Uh, sat back, watched regional two, any regional two all day, and uh, just a good chill and enjoy Rocket nice. League. You know. Yeah. Meanwhile, I'm I'm sweating. I'm working. Come on. Let's trade places one time. <laughs> I miss the days. <laughs> I miss the days being able to sit back, just to kind of enjoy it, watch it. But it it is nice. We got a good crew, so it is fun. I want to I want to talk to you real quick, um, just about your journey uh, into uh, Rocket League in general, man. We got to talk okay. about everything that, you, that you've been through because as i said crl you and that for a while you got uh the first touch pod, podcast you're doing now you're on the broadcast side of things let's talk about the first steps though getting into into rocket league what what got you into rocket league in the first place like what made you start playing okay uh initially it was i played on xbox so it came out february 2016 and i didn't really play too too much until that late summer august ish around there because my friend he uh watched all cs way back <laughs> and he was you know always talking how everybody can fly and stuff and i was i was just i i didn't really get the premise or like the the complexity of it until i saw he him doing it in game and then once he started doing it, i was really like motivated to start trying to get better and climb and that's when i started watching all cs all cs season three that in that early 2017 and dur during that process uh, we both love the game. We both have time to play it, and we just grind it. Like hitting a uh, rising star was really an accomplishment for me. <laughs> and I was just, it's just, it's just that initial grind to get grand champ that everybody wanted to achieve that really motivated me to play the game. And what pushed me further than that is um, the CCA College Carball have the branding on right now. Uh, in 2017, that summer, uh, they created it. And they had LSU was really a, a great team. I, I'm literally live 30 minutes away from LSU. I'm hometown boy, and I was gonna go there anyways. And they were, had a great team. And I wanted to make that team, so that's what pushed me even and motivated me even more to like really make it all the way to the that like grand champ SSO type level nowadays. There you go. That's that's sick though. So you eventually make it on, and then and now that's got to be a process itself too. Like having a, a solidified team that you're representing again the tag of LSU on. Uh, you know, did, did, did that change the way that you kind of viewed competitive Rocket League? The fact that there was now a, a team that was behind you. There's a, uh, you know, a family of people behind you watching you play and that you're representing and now the pressure kicks in. Did, you, did that change the, the landscape for you when it came to competitiveness? Yeah, it did for sure because I wasn't just playing for myself. I was playing for other. I was playing for not only my teammates, but also the fans playing for the school. I'm also and I'm playing for CRL and Sonics even further back than that like there are multiple levels that I'm like representing at this point I gotta hold myself to the highest uh, class. I can't be typing in game chat can't be being toxic to anybody like uh, it's just a certain uh, Representation that I want to put put in display. So not only let kids know that within this area that LSU Rocket League we're a good group of guys. We're good at the game and if you want to come play here I mean put in the time and we're, we're we'll be happy to take you in and uh, just like really build CRL. I want to make CRL 
really great. It annoyed me how much people always associate it as a C3 league or it's not that important and stuff like that. Because for me personally, being able to compete at that level, at because right now Zero is legit on SSL, but being able to complete, compete at like almost the, one of the highest levels and then make scholarship money aside of that, it's like a hobby. It's one of your favorite hobbies you're doing. When you're at SSL level, you put in tons of time. So, it, and, <laughs> and so... And to do that while pursuing education, sometimes it even pays people's education, like Too Fast, for example. Plays with UNT at the moment. He even tweeted out about two weeks back that Collegiate Rock League has allowed him to pay off his debt already. So, like, he's going to graduate loan debt-free from college, and that's amazing. I, and I really, like, want, want zero, and it has to become that, but I really want to push for that. And uh, that's for it. So, yeah, it changed my representation. In a way. I'm going to let you go now, man. I'm not, I'm not going to keep you any longer. Uh, again, you're a busy man as of late, so uh, I just want to I just want to say again, Good stuff on on first touch if there's anywhere else that people can catch you now's the time to do it uh where else can we find you on the internet okay uh sometimes i am going to be on the e united youtube channel for their rock elite content and then within the next week or two i will be starting my own youtube channel with my own content first touch of course you can catch me on the cca broadcast for collegiate rock league that's the b stream um, I sometimes do some analyst work on there. Uh, try to, and I really, and that's why I realized how hard it is for you, Leaf and Gibbs, and all you on the desk to be analysts because it's near impossible. <laughs> um, working, working. Thanks so much for joining us, Tyler. Appreciate it. Justin out of this corner with 15 seconds left. Memories looking for the security. Oh! Oh! Justin thinking he has time to grab boost here in the corner. Catches a lot of that ball. Takes a real bad skip for him, too. He gets the bump attempt on Andy, but Andy gets by two defenders. Wide open net, potentially. Ooh. And he does flick it by Atomic, who looked like was recovering from a demo. Oh, my goodness. Miss left the back door wide open here. Great catch, great scoop, and flick on target. The answer is get the ball flat and hit it fast to the right-hand side. Happened to beat AJ, too. Oh, the AJ with the flow! Oh, the ceiling oh. shot all the way in! AJ's on fire right now! Those hot shots think they're so great with all their perfect mechanics, great rotations, their 200 IQs. I guess they are pretty great, to be honest. But now it's time for something else that's also pretty great. It's the breakout. And starting us off is Coulter27, who says that they love Rocket League. And that, my friend, is why you're still stuck in Platinum. I'm kidding, but that is exactly why a lot of people doing flipper sets are stuck in Platinum. Because they have no finish, or they go for it when they should have. Shouldn't have. Don't go, don't, only go for them if you know you can, and you can't. I can't even attempt to do it. <laughs> Let's move on though, because Hananen says, get that garbage out of here. He may not be a brick wall in real life, but he is definitely a brick wall in Rocket League, and that's what we all need. Moving on though, Azergoth, said they were fed up with being bumped around the rest of the match. The best part is you can tell that all of the bumps that he got back on that guy were revenge bumps. I don't care if I'm scoring. I don't care if you're scoring. I'm getting the bump on you because I'm mad and I'm going after you. I'm proud of you, my friend. Keep demoing on. But our next one, now we have to move on, comes from Fraggy, who shares with us the next Rocket League prodigy.
Hold up. Who? Where's the camera? Who put a camera in my room? Not cool. Didn't even have my makeup on. I'm, I'm kidding though. But we do actually talk about going monkey on the ball, and that is precisely uh, what you would do. You just end up ball chasing. So, I just didn't realize they actually were monkeys. Finally up, Ajax three 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 two two one posted this saying they've peaked as a player and as a person. I, I don't know, I like it, but I can't tell if I like it. That must be art. This is art. It, I've, I don't know what I'm looking at. It's art. Congratulations on the million dollar masterpiece. Well, we are done with this segment. Let's move on. Up next, Double Tap is featuring one of the greatest teams in the world. It's NRG. Continued success in esports is no simple task. In order to stay on top year after year in a constantly evolving meta, a team needs to keep a roster of skilled players capable of strong teamwork and incredible adaptations. This consistency has been the key to NRG's domination of North America in nearly every season since their formation, a domination that still continues to this day. NRG got their start in the Rocket League scene in 2016, acquiring Kings of Urban's roster, Fireburner, Jacob, and Sad Jr. The trio made an incredible first impression by winning the RLCS Season 2 North American Regional a mere month later, setting the standard that NRG would come to define for the duration of their reign. Goal away from securing the championship. And going into land as the number one seed from North America. Sad Jr. setting this one high. Fireburner looking for an opportunity. As Turtle plays it soft, a nice tap there from Fireburner, rolling it in. Garrett now has ball control. Jacob takes it from him. It's just Moses in the back. He's able to win the 50-50, but Sad Jr. there sets it up on the backboard. Turtle with the hard clear. Both Moses and Garrett go up. This could be bad. Can Jacob finish it? Going for the boost. He doesn't get there. Sad Jr. can't get it either. Oh, Such it a oh, and Jacob finishes it off. NRG are your champion. The team performed decently well at their first world championship, just barely missing the top four after getting knocked out of the tournament by winners to be Flipside Tactics. 13 seconds left or NRG is done. That is gonna be it, unless NRG can find a way through. 1-0 is the scoreline, nine seconds remain. Cooks it, clears it away. Here comes NRG with their last gasp of the tournament. Here's Fireburner, looks for the setup. It's in the middle, played away, but here oh, is the play. No. It's the floor, and that is going to be a saying goodbye to NRG. Following this loss, the team hit the ground winning multiple weeklies to develop their skills. When Season 3 kicked off, NRG, now with Garrett G in place of Sad Jr., easily aced the qualifier without dropping a set. Here in game number four, NRG one goal away from qualifying for Season 3 league play for North America. Denial just trying to keep their hopes alive. Denial might want to try and buy a bit of time and wait for a mistake from NRG, and but there isn't going to be one. Fireburner clutching it for NRG. As quickly as possible, this Touch from Jacob off of the wall and somehow read by a fire burner. And he didn't just read it, but he placed it so beautifully. He kept it down, kept it straight. NRG once again took first place in that season's NA Regional. And their momentum even continued on to the LAN. While they didn't go the distance, the trio made it all the way to the winner's finals before dropping two consecutive sets to the grand finalist. Once again, red yet by Remco. And Turbo Pulsar going to get another draw, the best way of wasting time. Get it to over to the side. Jacob needs to save this. Still dangerous. Fire burner. 20 seconds remaining. That's a big demo on Garrett as well. He will not be involved in any more of this offense. 13 seconds. Fire burner couldn't make contact with the front of his car. 10 seconds remaining. And Northern Gaming could be about to break the streak. They are no longer the bronze medalists. They are going to the grand final. Season four was something of a low point for energy, as they, for the first time, failed to win the NA regional stage and flunked out of the world championship without winning a single match. Perhaps this served as a wake-up call for the team. In the subsequent year, they put on a much better show, capped off by new member Justin making Rocket League history with one of the most impressive goals of all time. Being held back now by the Panda, puts it straight out. It's gonna be over to Kano! It's almost there by Scott! The shot on answered from Kano! All 
season long is that support from Turbo. And he won't let up now. Four seconds left. NRG need this immediately. They've got to kick off in their favor. Kato tries to clear. It is almost there. It just has to hit the floor. But a Panda puts it the long way. And it's almost there. Justin keeps it alive. Turbo puts it there. Bounces it into the corner. NRG still around. Justin hits there for the shot. Justin! Justin! This is Rocket League. Season 6 through 8 also saw NRG taking North America by storm, but it was Season 8, the one season in which the team included Rocket League superstar Turbo Pulsa, that ended up being their finest hour. An incredible run at the World Championship Series, including not one but two victories against all-star team Renault Vitality, culminated in NRG finally winning the gold for the first time after some extremely hard-fought matches. Let's go! result this time. Great play to the corner. Very big. He's got past two players. Looks for a bump. Garrett G clears line. Justin! 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 NRG! Do what they could not do before! NRG, now consisting of Garrett G, Justin, and Squishy Muffins, still performs well to this day. Quickly adjusting to Season X's online format, the trio regained their iron grip on the region with impressive play in the Winter Split, including major victories in the Grid and the Winter Major. Consistency is an underrated skill, but it's one that NRG has shown to possess season after season as they continue to show why they're one of the best teams in North America and even the world. At the end of the day, I think we all have to agree that we're a little bit of an NRG fan inside. I mean, how can you not be a fan of Garrett G specifically? Or now Squishy Muffins or Justin, but Garrett G, one of the most consistent players in all of Rocket League. He's smart, great communications, his mechanics continue to stay at the top with the rest of the players and the best of the best. It's just crazy how he's been to every single Worlds, and that would include Season X, if there was one, his team is qualified, they have enough points, that's every single world situation. Garrett G is a monster. NRG is here to stay. And they are going to continue being at the top. You can mark my word. And I know you're all fans too. But that is all the time we have for today. Thank you guys so much for watching. You can catch more of our content on YouTube or check us out on Twitter at Squad State. That's it. As I said, thank you so much for watching. And here for some little overtime action is your weekly backfire. Bum, bum, bum.